Hello, hello, hello. Wrong button. There we go. How is everyone? Woo! It's Sunday. Sunday? Sunday? Sunday. 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 Um, yeah, it's Sunday. We normally don't stream on a Sunday, but this whole weekend was kind of uh, a little bit of everything kind of mashed together. A bunch of stuff going on, family stuff and uh, trips and vacations and whatnot. And I asked you guys yesterday if you wanted to wrap this up today or next week, and you wanted to wrap it up today. So there we are. I just dropped my mouse. Yeah. Come on. There we go. So yeah, um, the Rook, it's built, um, as you can see here, on this totally not correctly framed, let me fix that camera. Um, the Rook is built. Uh, I've gone ahead and fixed some things. So look, the, the fans, they spin. Uh, we've got a Bowden tube here. I've redone some of the wiring. I, I tensioned the Z motor. It still drops like a rock, but it doesn't, you know, drop like a rock rock. Um, but yeah, we are pretty much at the cusp of printing. All we have to do is PID tune uh, the bed and the hot end, do a um, set our Z offset, and we're ready. I actually already uh, checked the extruder. So the extruder is already pushing the filament the right way and the right amount. So we are pretty much right at the end and the only reason I didn't do the other stuff, um, and by other stuff I mean like tuning and whatnot, is because um, I wanted to eat dinner. So I ate dinner. So let's power this up and get her going. So how's everyone doing today? How's everyone doing today? It's Sunday. Uh, I know it's, it's not a normal stream day for me. Uh, and it's earlier than I normally stream. Today's stream, probably only gonna be about two hours, maybe a little bit later, um, but we're only gonna do about a two hour stream today, hopefully. Uh, plan is to get this printing, print like a calibration cube or something, print the neuro cube or something just to make sure it works. And then uh, we'll set it to do some other longer print, let that go for a bit and then we'll call it. And then, um, as always, we got the spool of Polymaker Filament to give away. So if you haven't entered yet for your chance to win some Polymaker Filament, link in the video description. Um, we will do that draw at the end of the stream. So yeah. You're sick? That sucks. Being sick sucks. And then also, I've got this little handy dandy thing. Um, Chuck gave it to me at Murph. So we got the... Uh, the Filament Friday Leveler. And we're gonna use this to, uh, to, to, to level our bed. I wanna give it a shot. Put that sticker on. Do I have a Filament Frenzy? I do not. I'm gonna start putting stickers on here. Just waiting for it to boot up. It should be booted up actually right now. Uh, ba -ba -ba -da. What kind of game? Um, what do I have in here? Low hole blast. I am almost out of emotional damage and I still have like half a tub of brand risk. There you go, Filament Friday. Do I want the walking G code? Uh, not right now. So as you can see, uh, we have it up, it's running, um, it will home. I had to play around with a few of the settings. Um, once I got the Bowden tube and everything on, the Y homing was too sensitive and it was actually um, false triggering. Like it wasn't triggering right. Okay, so now we gotta do some PID. Oh, and remember that thing that fell out of it last stream? I figured out what it was. It was one of the screws for the front fan or one of the nuts for the front fan. So nothing mission critical, luckily. Okay, so 
We'll do the hot end first. Tune for PLA. So let that do its thing. Uh, we do have fan spin. We're good there. Totally badass. Uh, we do need to do some... Uh, Uh, what's the bomb kit cost? Beef ingot! Glad you asked. This kit is actually a kit from Fabrico. So you just buy it. Link in the video description. Um, if you want to self-source one of these, it depends on the parts you use. Like, here's the thing. If you have a bunch of 8mm rods kicking around at home, that'll save you some money. If you have, like, an old clapped out, like, Anet A8, you can salvage the motors from it, you can salvage the rods from it. You, you might be able to build one of these like just with like the spare parts you have left over. It, it really depends on what you want to put into this and what you're expecting to get out of it. I personally view printers like this as you want to build them as cheap as possible because that's kind of the point of them. Um, oh, music. Good, good idea, Spice King. Um, like I, I know people have built 2020 versions of these. There's the 100 variant, which it needs a better name but like where it's like designed to go out i'm like yeah it, it, it this kind of machine it, i i like its simplicity i like how it, it knows what it is it's not asking for much and it makes a plastic boat and it looks kind of cool um but there are people that likes to put push the limit and all the power to them so it's your printer build it the way you want <laughs> Hi, Steve. How you doing? So right now, we're doing some PID, PID looping. Also, I've got resin going. I'm really hoping this works out. Um, I don't, do I have the parts up here? No, I don't, okay. Well, um, shoot. Are you actually on the build plate? I can't see. <laughs> it's always good when you're printing resin and you can't actually, no, not alarm, I want flashlight. Flashlight, flashlight. Right, did you fail? I think you failed. Shoot. What part failed? I need to take the lid off. Eh, some of it failed. We'll see. Um, I'm printing, uh, I'm building currently a Punished Props uh, Blade Runner blaster. And I'm really hoping this works. This was the only amber resin I could find on Amazon Canada. It's from 3D Materials. It's it's water soluble for, um, and, and this expires all the confidence. It's for 3D print TIG. So if, if you know if you got your TIG, you know if you're if you're TIG welding, it's for 3D print TIG. Um, I'm, 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 I'm buoyed, buoyed, buoyed with uh, confidence in this material. Um, but I'm hoping it kind of works because I, I, I want the amber grips on it. So we'll see how that goes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm exuberantly confident. As, lo as long as the grips kind of look like this, um, I'll be happy. As long as the grips come out kind of looking like this, I'll be happy. Um, so yeah. Oh, okay, so that is done. So save, config, and drop the bed. Yeah, the, uh, the bed dropping all the time is kind of annoying, but it is what it is. Okay, now we PID tune the bed. I was quit when I came in here. 
I'm twice as quit now. English? What other, what other, is there any? Let's see what else is it. Water wash up. They spelt washable wrong. Water wash alb resin for printig parts with super fast curing. Preparations for use. Always wear protective gloves when handling the products. Always keep the products away from direct sunlight or lighting. Lightings. Direct lightings. Read the manual carefully. Um, there is none. Uh, shape, or oh, there might have been in the box. Oh well. Uh, shake the product well. Uh, check the recommended exposure conditions. Okay. Use warm water and soap to remove excess printing. Yeah, it's going into the ISO bath. I'm just going to ISO. Um, Storage, store the product in 10 to 25C. Well, it's 30.4 in here right now. When, when contacted with eyes, do not rub your eyes and immediately flush eyes with plenty of water for at least 15 minutes and call a doctor. When inhaled, move to a location with clean air. When ingested, it, it, it should say if, not when. <laughs> Talk to doctor immediately if allergic shines are shown. Yeah. It's from Korea. It's actually, it's not Chinese, it's from Korea. Cool. Is it a good idea to get a resin printer if you have no space? Here's the thing. If you need a resin printer, then get a resin printer. If you don't need a resin printer, don't get a resin printer. Um, resin stinks. This machine, the, the Mars 4 Max, I'm using that right now. It's going pretty good. Um, I've had a few funky issues, but that's more like um, this one, this part right here. Um, you can see the stepping in it. Focus. Focus on that. Focus on the hands. Okay, it was, focus on that. Okay, Ooh, there we go. Okay, see the stepping? That was, um, I had it on an angle like that and the support didn't connect. So it kind of like unsupportedly, it, it, it screwed up, but that's a slicing issue. Um, but like, look how, I don't know, look how clean that text is. Like. Look how clean that is. So, oh, we're done. Oh no, it's still doing the bed. Still doing the bed, okay. And then it's it's relatively stiff, like it should be okay for what we're doing here. And I'm printing the whole thing solid. I'm not bothering with infill or any of that. A new world awaits you in the off-world colonies. Also, I, I do like how this thing actually tells you which way to turn the knob, <laughs> up or down. I'm just excited because now that this build series is done, this guy's next. <laughs> I am so excited for that build series. I I cannot wait um, for that build series. I, uh, it is going to be fun. It is going to be fun. Um, it's going to be Saturday night. I have a feeling there'll be a lot of what the hell were they thinking comments. Um, <laughs> yeah. Getting stuff like wash and cure resin. Yeah, so like right now I've got my my resin station set up here in the garage. Um, so you can see it over there. So there's the resin machine. I actually have the, the, the small container there. What I do is when I take the prints out of the resin, I break the supports off right away. And then I take the part and I dunk it in that, the small tank a couple times, like I got the basket there, I dunk it in there. And then I put it in the actual wash station. Um, that way I don't get the wash station all like that resin really contaminated because when they first come out they're soaked in resin right so I use that pre-wash 
to just kind of clean off and then it goes to the wash station for like 10 minutes it washes and then it goes in the cure station which actually i got parts in the cure station yeah and then they come out and they're 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 good to go but these these shouldn't need a lot of processing because like there's one of the triggers you can see how clean that looks it's pretty much like good to go a little bit of sanding and putty fill for a few scars and then yeah uh if you're wondering what's going on we're waiting on the bed pid too and then do the z offset home it and we're good Need a 3D print resin printer cover hooks for the walls. I do, I do, but I wanna leave that wall up there clear for shelving. But the problem, I, the annoying thing with resin, they all have containers that you gotta take the lid off and that just is super annoying. It just gets super annoying real quick. Um, I'm gonna tilt this camera up a bit, one second. You come forward a bit and you pivot there. there we go. Um, so you, got, you need like full clearance above the machine. It's like yesterday when we were talking about the Cheaty, which is reprinting me now. I thought I started it this morning and then I, I, I guess I didn't push like start. So I, I thought I had the print running for like four hours and I did it. So now it's printing me again. Uh, ultrasonic cleaner with trisodium phosphate as agent gets the best results, especially for detail. Yes, but I don't have a big enough ultrasonic and Elegoo sent me that. So... Or do what Zach did. What did he do with his resin machines? Yeah, I, I, I know there's mods and whatnot. Um, I'm kind of doing, I might end up doing, I don't think I'm gonna do a review on the Mars 4 Max, cause let's be honest, it's a resin machine. They all operate exactly the same way and they all print damn good. How do you make that a 10 minute video? I'm not a YouTuber that can stretch that to 10 minutes, but I probably will use the Blade Runner video or videos that I make to kind of review the printer in the process. So more, hey, I'm using this printer to make these parts. Um, yeah. Huge enclosure, able to film resin. Oh, so he put them all like in an enclosure that, okay, I see what he did. Have that super fast, works really well. Lower print time to 1.8 seconds. Okay, how, how, if you have any pictures of like thicker prints from that, can you post them in the Discord? Cause I wanna know how it looks, cause the only pictures I could find were like little models. I wanna know how like amber, like if I, if it's not dark enough, I might mix it with some black resin just to make it, because I, I, I want this kind of look. So we'll see. Hello from Tokyo. Uh, hello there. What is it? Konnichiwa? Konnichiwa. Uh, Shinji Baka. That, that's about it. Um, Better consumer resin. The problem is there needs to be a demand for it. Like you don't have the open sourceness of resin that you do with FDM. That's kind of the, the downside with resin. It's everything's running a Cheetu board. So. Plus, you know, resin is toxic and horrible for you. Hello from London, Ontario. Oh, hi, Ray. You're like two hours north of me. Rook for zero two. Uh, depends. The Rook is a much simpler build, but it is a much simpler machine. This is not an enclosed ABS machine. Uh, this machine probably, you're not gonna get the same shelf life of this machine as a, um, you know, move some stuff around over here. Uh, come on, come on, come on. So this is a zero one, um, not a zero two but potatoes, potatoes. Okay, so if you want some comparisons, here's an enclosed V0 
Here's an open frame Rook. The Rook is pretty much bigger in every way. Um, it's not enclosed. Um, it's not direct feed, it's boated. Um, you have less capability with the Rook. It's a larger machine. It's a more simple machine, but it's a cheaper machine. It's an easier to build machine. Um, it, it depends what you're looking to get out of the machine. That's the thing. Like, if, if you were going to be using this machine a ton on your desk at work, I would build something like this. If you're just looking for, hey, I've never built a machine before, and I'm just looking for something that's a fun, simple build. Well, Rook might be more up your alley. It, it really depends on what you're going to use your machine for and what you're looking to get out of the machine. So, yeah. Is this still PID tuned in that bed? It is almost done. Get the Mamaki. Well, okay, the, the, the Mamaki is, it's a Mamaki. <laughs> that's, that's a little out of pretty much everyone in this room's budget. <laughs> What about the perform? Oh, the, the V, the, the zero, here's a, it's a Core XY driven by, this is driven by NEMA 17s, that's driven by NEMA 14s, but technically the fast, I think the current fastest speed Benchy is on a, a tweaked out V0. Performance, they're both the same. They're both, it depends what hot end you put in it, depends how you set it up and tune it. Pretty much all 3D printers have the same performance cap. I don't care what any vendor tells you, it's a NEMA 17, well, NEMA 14, NEMA 17 with V0, but it's a NEMA 17 driven Core XY system using the same belts and pulleys as everyone else. It's like NASCAR. Everyone has the same engines and the same wheels and the same drivetrain. They, they're, they're all gonna perform within spec of each other. They just, you know, this one has a, a leaf blower in it so it can cool the plastic faster, so it can run a little faster. But in terms of how fast they can move, they're all about the same. I can make my V1.0 from 2016 that runs DRV8825s on a ramp board with 12 volts. It will move as fast as a bamboo. Obviously, it doesn't have a high flow hot end. It doesn't have the cooling to keep up with that, but it could physically move as fast as a bamboo and do everything that a bamboo does. It just doesn't have the cooling or the output. I can modify that to do it though. So. When, when, when you see manufacturers kind of show off performance numbers, they're all using the same Lego. Remember that. So best place for plexiglass. Okay. Um, I've gotten like the cheap sheets at like Home Despot. That's about it. There, there's really no cheap plexiglass in Canada. Um, you, you can get like tap plastic will ship to Canada. Pricey though. They're all 3X faster than the ones that are 3X lower. Yeah, I, I love that. The, our new machine is 10 times faster. Then, then, then what? Stiffness and cooling make the difference. That will come into play. Uh, stiffness, well, here's the thing. We have, you now have input shaper, um, which can affect, you know, it, it can help those machines that aren't as stiff as the old machines. Um, but most modern machines are relatively stiff. And it, 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 they're all stamped sheet metal core XYs. That's what we're all moving to. Um, my my Chidi X Smart 3 here, it's about as stiff as the bamboo. It's about as stiff as my Vorons. They're, 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 they're all pretty much within spec. As I go to scrapyards to find Plexi. That actually, the thing is, you have to find a scrapyard that actually has Plexi in a place you can get at, and it's probably gonna be scratched to shit. I'm late, or are you gonna build it? It is built, we're, we're just waiting on a PID tune on the bed, and then we're gonna do um, do our uh, bed level, and then we're gonna print something. Where coral plast work for enclosing? Yes, um, tall boy, my, my tall V2 that we're gonna be doing some mods on in a little bit, um, is enclosed with coral plast on all sides except for the front, because I wanna see into it. And it works just fine. The problem you gotta worry about with Coroplast is depending on how hot your chamber gets, um, it might deform a little bit over time, especially the bottom plate. 
um, the one under the bed. And it's not as stiff, so you're gonna have a, you're not gonna get as high as temperatures, pretty much. Is it impossible to enclose a rook? Yes, but I wouldn't. Um, this entire machine is, is plastic, and the spec for this is PLA. Friends don't let friends enclose PLA printers. Friends don't let friends build printers out of PLA. Uh, mine is all ABS, but still, it, it's it's pure plastic. Like the only metal in the frame are these four rods and the and the rails. Everything else is plastic. How are am I? I'm doing good. So hurry up! Oh, we're done. Okay. Save, config. Ready? Drop the bed. What do we even have for a bed here? So I've got uh, PI on this side and I've got carbon fiber on this side. It's actually carbon fiber mesh. So what I actually have, and I've been using this stuff because Buddy gave it to me at uh, Murph. Um, Northprint 3D. Um, the guy who traded me for the Tico uh, owns a print store in Canada up here um, and he sells a bed adhesive and I've been using the um, the standard stuff on my beds like all of them and it's actually been working pretty dang good for ABS so I'll give it a try with PLA and see how that goes okay so let's heat the bed back up to 60 and uh, level this out Real CF or texture. I think it's just a, a CF sticker um, attached to PLA or attached to the spring steel. Like it's not a sheet of carbon fiber, but I think it's like a really thin sticker of, of carbon fiber. Like you could feel the weave. It is carbon fiber. Okay, um, so, so let's see here. Um, so we're at Z25, so let me move up. Um, Z10. Oh, G1. Why is he? Woo! Okay. <laughs> okay. So let let's see how how much I gotta adjust this. Ooh. Okay. Um. Yeah, what is that, five? Four, okay. Printers or Z. So how much can I squish those beams? I can probably squish those some more, but I don't know how much squish I have in these. I don't wanna squish them too much. They are kind of squished already. Um, end stop position, where is? it and stop and stop and stop pin or actually I got to do that where's that stupid thing or I'll just do this the, the the offset thing uh, where is it where is it where is it oh there it is okay Position end stop 100, position max 100. So do I only have 95? Do I only have 95 millimeters of travel on this? Oop. Home all. 300 watch. We got 300 people here. Do we have 300 people here? It, we don't have 300 people here. Do we have 300 people here? My YouTube app bugging out. Oh, we do. Like the smash button. My YouTube app was bugging out. It said I only had like 114. I'm like, I know, I know this isn't my normal stream day, but like, it shouldn't be that bad. Uh, plain text. Thank you for coming, a member.
Okay, so that's zero. Okay, so machine. So let's do 90, 96. Because we don't have a lot of travel on here. There's like no no over travel on this. 97. Let's do 97 and I'll just I'll I'll dial in the bed. Drop the bed. Went down the 295. Oof. Where'd you go? Now I'm realizing I haven't put a fan under this. Um, I haven't hooked up a part fan or a controller fan. I'm I'm hoping these drivers don't overheat. Um, I know a V0 usually doesn't need it. Um, but <laughs> we'll find out in a second. We'll find out in a second. Okay, so that's good there. Okay, so now... Oop, wrong way. Let's get my little leveler under here. So this is pretty cool. It lights up. There's a little LED. So I'm just going to put the... Oh. So I want up. So I'm just going to spin this. And you can see the LED, you can see, ooh, it's, ooh, they, Chep went with a sensitive one. He went with a sensitive one. That's good. Watch, watch. So it's blinking. Watch. Let, okay, I'm going to, it's, it's. <laughs> I told the bed to heat up. It was right on the cusp. I told the bed to heat up and now it's hitting. Okay, so that's good there. Okay. So, X. Okay, Y. Bring Y back. Oh, other way. Oh, I can't go that far. it up you raise me up to make the thing go beep oh. so you got to be a little careful because when you when you're screwing with it um you're you're you, you tend to like push the bed up. You need to like adjust it and then let go. Perfect. Okay, there we go. Uh, plain text, 10 euro for the garage overhead camera. Cheers. Uh, there we go. There we go. Light goes blink and that's it. So yeah, so if, if you're interested, if you got manual machines, like you got, you know, old school machines, I, this isn't a sponsored thing. Chep just gave it to me at Murph and he's like, hey, try it out. Let me know what you think. It, eh, if you like the guy, you like his content, instead of like subbing to his Patreon, buy one of these or something. It, it, this is, you know, I'll keep it around. I'll use it when I need it. It's, it's, it's a nice visual that you're uh, 
that you're you're doing it right. I think it's a nice visual to see that you're you're doing it right instead of the uh, little paper method. Steve gifted five community memberships. Cheers, Steve. I love how like I'm subbed to Steve and he's subbed to me. So basically we just give the same money to each other. It's just YouTube. The only one making money off of that is YouTube. Okay, what's the, what's that Z offset thing? Uh, what is the command for bed Z offset? Da, da, da. Initial Z offset, there we go, okay. So Z and stop calibrate, there we go. Okay, so we gotta move close, so. So this, I do have to, I, I'm sure I could do the math, but this I'm gonna use a piece of paper for, because that's just, that's how I roll, if I can find a piece of paper. Who's got paper? You got paper? Where are the papers at? Who's got the papers? Ugh. There we go, thank you. Amazon, you've got paper. Logan, gifted 5 k memberships. Cheers, Logan. Here we go. Accept. Okay. Save. Config. Ready? Drop the bed. Do I really need to unplug all your connections? No, I've never, I've always flashed firmware with the board like fully connected up. It's never been an issue. Um, so let's extrude some plastic. I have it loaded. I think I have it loaded. We'll figure out in a second here if I have it loaded, loaded. Um, oh, did I, did, 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 did. A PF Dennis gifted five carry memberships. Cheers. Yeah, I love how the bed just like, I'm gonna drop the bed. So I'm gonna take this off, let it cool off for a minute, and I'm gonna put this stuff on it, the standard stuff. The strong stuff, I haven't tried the strong stuff. I don't know, I think it might be a little strong. If you, is this a hype train? Um, I don't know, I don't do the Twitch thing where I got annoying shit flying over the screen. Although, there's me and bunny ears. I don't have, a, uh, the, YouTube doesn't have hype trains, do they? No, they don't. Like, I know that why they do it on Twitch, because it's all gamified and dopamine response and whatnot. But I always found, like, hype trains kind of weird. Like, hey, a bunch of people have given money to this guy. You should, too. Let's get this train going. This is a wubby hype train, because then he's got the cool graphic for it. KB3D, gifted five k memberships. Cheers. Okay, that heated up. So let's extrude 50 mil of filament. Um, extrude. Oh, there we go. That's not the right button. That's not the right button. That's the right button. Look, look. Look, it did the thing. You get a membership, everyone gets a membership. The more the merrier or something, I don't know. I was gonna do the stream inside, to be honest, today, because it is kind of hot out here. I'm really hoping this doesn't overheat. We'll find out. If it does, it does. 
So what build volume do we have on here? We have, what is it, 100 by 100 by 99? Uh, 110 by 110. Is it 110 by 110? So we got 95 on the Z. Position max 109, 110. Yeah, so it's 110 by 110. Okay, let's let's turn you off. So let's fire up Orca Slicer. So I believe this uses the V0 profile. Um, you just change the bed size. Is, is my overlay bugging out? Uh, is the overlay bugging out? There we go. Stock is 95, 10 to build, taller for that reason. That makes sense. Like, here's the thing. Like, I'm not... If, if you're building a printer like this and you are already maxing it out, um, there are bigger designs. There, there's, I, I think the 180 is a common variant of this. Um, so, yeah. Okay, so we got V0. So we're gonna use V01, cause that's Bowden. Okay, confirm. And then we are going to modify you. So you are now no longer V0. You are now printable height, 95 mil. Um, what is it, 110 by 110? I'm gonna, I don't like using the whole thing. We'll do 108 by 108. We'll just play a little safe. Okay. Um, it's running Clipper, blah, blah, blah. Cool. We're going to save you as Rook. Rook 1. Okay. Um, I'm just going to use whatever the G code here is because yo ho lo ho. Um, I could dig it. Bed type is a bed. Um, we only have one filament here, and that is generic pla. Although, actually, I think we got Jesse in there right now. Um, did I hit save? I hit save. Yeah, see, it's, it's Rook Mark 1. We saved it. Um, uh, 3D models, Nero 3D, uh, cube. We're gonna just use the stock profile for PLA. Uh, connections. Post name, oop, let me set this up. One second here. One, host name URL, there we go. Browse, oop, one second here. Test, works correctly, cool, okay. Place plate, print, upload and print. There we go. How do I like Orca? I really like Orca. So file selected. Okay, so it's heating the bed up. Orca basically took uh, bamboo slicer and made it not um, specific for bamboos and added a bunch of stuff that makes it really nice. And then Bamboo took it and put it back in. <laughs> bamboo Slicer. But I, I, I'd rather run the, the Slicer that's actually innovating instead of the Slicer that's just copying the innovating Slicer. Because I trust the guy who's working on the Slicer that's innovating to know what it's doing more. But yeah, I've been using Orca more and more. I still use Super Slicer a little bit for some of the V2s inside, but pretty much everything I run, I'm running outside here in the garage uh, is Orca Slicer. Even the uh, the Chidi that we unboxed yesterday, I'm using Orca. So, is Boater better than direct drive at anything at all? Lighter. That's that's pretty much it. It's it's lighter. That that's pretty much it. And it's well, it technically allows you to make a more compact hot end. Um, beyond that. 
No, I'm personally a huge fan. If you can go direct feed on a tool head, go direct feed because it, it eliminates a whole set of issues and things that can go wrong and a whole set of things that can cause issues in a print. So I'm a big fan. If you can go direct feed, go direct feed. Oh, I know that's the point of GPL. I, I, I'm fully aware. But in terms of, I, 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 I don't know. I just don't really, I'm trying to avoid installing bam, bamboo stuff on my network as much as possible, even though I know Orca Slicer is a derivative of Bamboo Slicer. Um, I'm just a security issue. It's really kind of getting annoying, the whole encrypted logs and everything. Yeah. <laughs> don't trust Corpos, exactly. Down with Arasaka. So it's gonna be interesting how this starts up, because again, I, I have no idea how this works. Isn't Super Slicer no longer? I don't know. I, I haven't heard official word. Here's the thing. The last stable release of Super Slicer still works. It's just lacking new stuff. So if you were running a profile for a machine that's you know running an older version of Clipper and everything worked and you have no issues with it, it still is a slicer that works with no issues with it. Um, you don't always need to be running the newest, great, latest and greatest, right? Um, yeah. Ender 3 converted to Core XY. You're, you're not converting an Ender to Core XY. You're ripping an Ender apart and you're reusing some of the parts to build a new Core XY. That's not really a conversion. Like you can convert an Ender to a switch wire. That makes a little bit more sense. You can convert an Ender to Clipper. But when you completely disassemble the printer down to its bare bones and what, you reuse the motors in the bed? to make a new printer with a new frame. Oh, okay, what are we doing, what are we doing? Are we too close to the bed? Or is plastic coming out? Oh, it just oozed too much. Yeah, it just oozed too much. Um, so that first layer is a little not great because it over extruded a bit. Um, I, I don't know if I can get a camera angle in here. Damn you, Rook. <laughs> well, you could stare through the belts. Yeah, the first layer, um, the outer wall, it, it oozed too much, so there's no purge. I don't have a purge on this. Um, I need to get this camera higher. <laughs> How do I make this camera higher? One second here. You go down, you come up, and you go down. There we go. There we go. Um, I did check the boat in. Uh, I told it to extrude 50 millimeters. It was extruding 48, and then I adjusted it to told it to extrude 50, and it pushed 50. So we should be kind of okay. Um, I, we haven't done input shaper or anything. It's running stock for everything, so. Well, it, it's this is just a, a, a C920 on a cheap tripod, nothing fancy. A full speed tuning video. Uh, read Ellis's guides. Honestly, when it comes to tuning Boron, just follow Ellis's guides. And this is gonna be a good test to find out if this thing needs active cooling because it is currently 31 Celsius in here um, with 46% humidity. <laughs> um, yeah. crazy how okay so the reason webcams have an advance is because they still use the same sensor the, the the itty bitty sensors they use aren't any better but what i can do to help cool down is travel over to the mythical realm of the fridge and in the fridge um there are cooled beverages and those cool beverages are tasty and i can acquire one because hey we're printing i deserve a reward
Today we are sampling again uh, the Muskoka Brewery Craft Lager. Um, drink them if you got them, smoke them if you got them. Cheers. How stable are our numbers? Oh, those look pretty stable. So we are getting a little bit of under extrusion on the infill. Um, I don't know if I, I didn't do any test, um, whatchamacallit. Um, there's no pressure advanced tuning on this, right? So. Uh, what about the diff the vid on the differences? Um, the more aggressive the input shaper you run, the faster you can go uh, without ghosting at the detriment to rounder corners. The fast, the more aggressive of an input shaper you run, the more it rounds your, your corners. So a, a, a sharp corner becomes a rounded corner. So if your prints have rounded corners, you are running too aggressive of an input shaper. So what you do is you run a less aggressive input shaper. I tend to stick with MZV, um, two humpy eye in a pinch. But you wanna try and like stick to the higher, less aggressive input shapers. Yeah, you don't get the most performance out of your machine. So you can't push those crazy excels that you can with the higher input shapers, but your prints come out looking better because they're not as rounded. Now, depends on what you're printing. If you're printing like printer parts and geometrically stable parts that need to be ge geometrically accurate, then you don't want to be running an aggressive input shaper, which means you're not going to be able to push the oh my god speeds without ghosting. But your prints will come out looking better. It, it's everything has a cost to it. You, you want to go faster, you increase your excels. You increase your excels, you get more ghosting. So you add input shaper. Well, you add input shaper, you can go faster without ghosting. But if you start putting too much input shaper, you get rounded corners. Nothing comes for free unless you build your printer out of like solid welded steel. Um, we're running whatever the stock V01 profile is. So if you want your speeds, there's the speeds, there's the flow rate. So it's 300 millimeters travel, it looks like. Nothing cray cray. The printing circles. That's why when you see printers showing off fast prints, especially like Creality love this one, that little demo print that's all the curved lines and it's just nothing but curved lines and straight. Yeah, that, that print is designed to allow you to go balls out on the printer. That's the point of that print. It, it's not an actual print. There's a reason speed benchies are one single thing. They, you don't print full plates of parts at speed benchy speeds because the parts would come out looking like shit um, and have layer adhesion issues. Nobody's printing full plates of boron parts at those speeds and getting good parts. And also that's why they do that loopy thing. It's like vase mode. It's like vase mode. It's, 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 a, it's a demo thing. How's the heat? Um, it's 31 Celsius right now. If... Which for you Americanskis, this is in a garage, by the way. That's why. Burr. Get a pina colada. I don't have a pina colada maker. My mom has a, a margaritaville though, so. F is better. No, it's not. What is the difference between 76 and 77? C, F for pools. Still no AC, no AC yet. Nope. I gotta still get the ceiling insulated. I gotta fricking find a company that's willing to do the ceiling. I tried calling another one and they wouldn't do it. They gave me the fuck you price. If, if you ever call for something, this is like anytime you got a call for a quote and they give you a price that's like stupidly high, that's not their rate. That's their, we don't want to bother, go away price. And I've gotten like two of those so far. Cause it's, they're so busy right now. They don't want to come do a small 300 square foot garage ceiling. Cause by the time they get out here, set everything up, they're, they're not gonna make as much 
as they would go doing a, an actual like house, so. Is it missing steps? No, it hasn't shifted. It is um, a little oozy and under extrudy, but I don't, I'm, I don't know if that's pressure advance. Um, after this print's done, we'll do a pressure advance tune and see if we need to adjust that value at all. Um, Cause this is a Bowden setup. So you, I'm assuming there's a default pressure advance setting in here. Um, let me look that up. Uh, extruder, extruder. Uh, maybe there's not. Yeah, there's no pressure advance. So yeah, it's running no pressure advance. So a Bowden setup without pressure advance is not a good thing. So yeah, so after this print's done, we'll, we'll do a pressure advance tune. Uh, if you get the mini split, then you can direct cold air into the attic and do insulation yourself. No. Um, it actually... Find somebody reputable under the table. Nah. Most of them will do cash. They just won't charge you tax for it um, if you pay cash. Um, the problem is renting the machine costs as much as somebody to do it. Because I have to rent the machine and a truck. And then I have to be in my attic for four hours. What PA test do I use? I use the one that's built into Orca Slicer now. Like, it, there's one built into Orca Slicer. Um, calibration, pressure advance, Bowden, PA line. There you go. And it will just do um, a pressure advance slice plate. It'll, it'll do this and you just, whatever line is the most consistent is your PA value. So we're gonna do that after this print is done. Throw it to convert an ender to direct drive. In my opinion, yes. Um, I, I personally, it, in my opinion, the stock, the stock extruder on the stock Ender 3 is the biggest, it's, it's literally caveman brick technology. It is like the fact that Creality still ships that straight tooth geared roller bit like that, that the thing's junk okay if, if you're upgrading your ender the first thing you should upgrade is that extruder it was bad for Bowden it is not great for Bowden because your stepper motor has to work a lot harder um, but if you have a good stepper motor or your your extruder motor um, if you have a good extruder you're fine Point. No, there is no uh, pressure advance value in this config, I think. What extruder do you recommend? Um, I don't know. I'm, I've been running a lot of these DIYs. This is a mini Sherpa in here. Um, if you're putting a extruder on going direct drive on a, or direct feed on an ender, um, you only got the one Z rod, so you don't want to put too much weight on that tool head, because again, it is an ender with V wheels and whatnot. So you want something light, something like an LGX light or DIY a Sherpa or um, an Orbiter 2. LGA, LGX light is weak. Um, I'm running LGX lights and a few V zeros and I've had zero issues with them. So didn't realize this was live. Job, we are live right now until like eight o'clock. Eight o'clock, I'm gonna do the draw and then we might, you know, shoot the shit till about just before 8.30 and then we'll call it because I've got very important things to do at 8.30. Very important. Why did I print a Rook on the Rook? That's a good question actually, because um, this is my Kelly cube. There's a Sherpa Micro now. Really? So here's the thing with the Sherpa. I feel like I'm gonna break this thing. <laughs> like I know the point of the Sherpa was to be a compact lightweight extruder, but one, the Sherpa is mounted to the frame of this thing. So weight don't mean shit. <laughs> and two, it's so like, like I can see stress marks in it already. <laughs> the Hummingbird extruder 1015 in gear than print housing. There you go. Um, I think the LGX light, or not the LGX, the Orbiter V2, I can't remember who did the video on it comparing all the, the lightweight extruders. And the LGX light was like the best performing when it came to weight, to performance, to uh, value. So 
Plus LDO makes them, and I like LDO, so. What's the point of the Rook? Um, a mostly printed, easy to build DIY Core XY. So this is like, for those that want to build a printer and they don't want to go all in and build like a Voron or VZBot or any of the other more complex kits, they're just looking for something simple. If you have like an old ANET or something you can salvage a bunch of parts off, you can self-source this really easily. There is really, the most complicated, the, the most expensive single part on this is probably getting either the controller board, which you can use any controller board that can hold four steppers. If you got a controller board that can control four motors, you can use it in this. Um, it can use most hot ends. I think the, the Ender hot ends a drop in. Um, so if you if you had like an old Ender or an ANET, you could reuse most of it for this. Um, you would need to buy rods and you need to buy uh, the, uh, per, um, you don't need to, but if you want a heated bed, the V0 bed. But yeah. Oh, 31.1. Yeah, it is, um, I can hear it catching up. Yeah, we need to do some PA. I've got a blob forming right there. It hasn't skipped though, so that's good. Uh, focus on ease of assembly and features most rather than cool factor. Here's the thing, like, there are simple Core XYs out there. Um, what is it, the Prusa Core XY? Uh, the snake oil, Prusa, uh, this guy. Like, you can build a Core XY relatively simply. Like, like there, it's not crazy hard to build a Core XY, and Core XYs have been around, you can find Core XY on printable from like 2014, 2015. There, there's been designs around for a while. Um, so it's not exactly rocket appliances building a Core XY nowadays. Um, there's a ton of designs out there. Hypercube. What's Hypercube Core XY? Hypercube Evo? I remember I was going to build a uh, fuse box before I got it found Voron, actually. Next Core XY used. I've been bugging Joe to send me one. Of I want one of those. So if you don't know what the Prusa AFS is, um, let me pull it up here. So Prusa has their print farm. Um, I will probably never buy one. You will never buy one. It is strictly aimed at commercial. That's why you don't hear about it. It's a commercial thing. Um, but I want one of these units because it's a neck extruder on a simplistic Core XY frame um, that is like the same size as a Prusa, a normal Prusa. Like it, 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 it uses like the segmented beds, but like one less or whatever. So it's like 260 or something like that for the volume, I think. Um, but yeah, I want one of these units. I don't want the whole thing. I just want one of those printers. Yeah, they're all cores, why? Yeah. But yeah, that, that thing, it's still in the works, but it is strictly a, um, oh, we had a layer shift. Yeah, we had a layer shift. It is a, uh, it's a commercial thing. They're, they're aimed at the commercial market with it. Can it be DIY? I'm sure you could d design a Core XY. Automated bed eject. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want the bed eject. I wouldn't want that. But I mean, like, this is Core XY. There it is, this is like the, the simplest Core XY you can build. There's like nothing to it. It's an, uh, <laughs> it's not an AFS. <laughs> it's a f f farm. Making designing core XY. Everyone's doing core XYs now. Everyone's doing core XYs now. Like, like, you know what? As much as I I, I, I rag on bamboo, um, good on them for kicking the market in the butt. Because let's be honest, if bamboo didn't do what bamboo did, Creality and all these other companies would still be shitting out the same V-wheel bed flingers nonstop. At least they've they've pivoted to having to 
put out decent machines finally that aren't just, you know, the same exact hardware just repackaged every time with one new feature. So, Carson, thank you for coming to remember. What do you think about the K1 Max? No idea, don't have one. Um, going off the build quality of the ones I've seen at trade shows, not super impressed. Uh, their clipper implementation is an abortion and um, they still can't figure out how to stop the X or the drag chain from dragging on the X rod. But yeah, I haven't touched one, so I can't really uh, comment on it. They said they were gonna send me a K1. I'll believe it when I see it. There's a fly in here. Mosaic element. I have, that machine is uh, like a commercial printer though. Mosaic element. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a commercial, yeah. Okay, are, are you ready? Are you ready? This is how you know it's a commercial printer. You load up the site, inquire. <laughs> inquire. The moment you see request a quote, it's not for you. <laughs> yeah, inquire, inquire. Yeah, it's a commercial machine. We don't do commercial. Can I mod the Tico? No, you can't mod the Tico. The Tico is all, the frame is, is single piece injection molded and it's a really stiff plastic that's prone to cracking. So you literally can't really mod a Tico. You can't like put rails in there. You would have to drill holes in the frame to mount rails and you'd have to machine out or Dremel out the old rails. Like you really can't modify a Tico. Like you can't. It's, it's, it's kind of locked into its current state, which kind of sucks, but. If I remember, these machines are like above five under 10 G, the mosaics. I'm trying to remember what I seen at, um, because they were at uh, Rapid and I was talking to them. 31 months, geez, I can't believe I've been doing that for this for that long. Best Tico mod is using it as a shelf art. Yeah, so the plan is eventually I'm gonna put it somewhere and just have it plugged in, not connected. So it'll just do it's like blinking and, and it'll just be uh, wall art basically. Seven K, I, I, I wanted to say eight, but that might've been the Canadian price that they gave me. So. Really, really enthusiastic. Here's the thing, for 10 grand, you can buy yourself freaking 20 P1Ss almost. You can buy like 15 P1Ss or 10 P1Ss for and a ton of filament. Like you really, really, really need to justify the cost for one machine like that. Like they sell it as a high temp machine because I think it gets up to like, the hot end will do 500. So it's for like engineering materials, which let's be honest, most of us at home don't even touch, so. Will I, would I build a, if, if a 2020 version of this kit were to show up, I would build it. Um, but I'm not gonna go out and self-source one, put it that way. Um, I've already dropped, I've already bought two printers already um, for this channel, the, the Prusa and the Ultimaker, which, oh God, G G great British pounds to Canadian buckaroos was, was, that hit the PayPal wallet hard. So if you wanna help support the channel, um, but yeah, so the Ultimaker and the Prusa were like the two big printers I bought for this channel this year. So hopefully I break even with those two. The 2020 version is the high performance of this. Please tell me it's bigger than 120 at least. Please tell me the, the 120 version is at least 180. Donate a few to local libraries. There you go. You just gotta be careful donating printers. Cause like I've given away a few printers now um, the problem is like, some of them are just like, I wouldn't give them to a library <laughs> because they're just donating them to like somebody who doesn't know how to use 3D printers and especially machines that need like proprietary slicers and whatnot. It's like, eh, 
Is it worth it? 40% extra. Um, it was 400 Great British Buckaroos. Um, or, 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 or shillings, or, or I don't know, the, the, I don't know, what, what's British money called? Pounds, sterling, I don't know. It was 400 British bucks. Um, so figure that out. <laughs> John Stern, $2, woodworm killer fun. What's a woodworm? Um, and who was that? Matt Shammy gifted a community membership. Cheers. Quid. Let me, let me, I, I hate, I keep forgetting YouTube always defaults to top chat, not live chat. Oh, woodworms eat wood, like your ultimaker. Um, so far the ultimaker's in pretty good shape, so, like. <laughs> okay, are you ready for this? Th this is what we're working with, are you ready? Y'all can never complain about modern 3D printer electronics. So. Ultimaker Electronics 1.57. That's a mosquito in here. Frank. So I, I, somebody was complaining about how big the controller board is for the uh, the Prusa Mark IV. Here's the controller board for an Ender or a, an Ender, an Ultimaker Original. I'm assuming those are eight. I don't know what kind of drivers these are. These are, um, the eight, four nines. Ultimaker, ulti steppers. They're ulti stepper drivers. Um, 54, 50 volt cap though. Um, so yeah, there's that. Um, and, and you're wondering, where's the MCU on this? I don't see an MCU. I don't see no STM32 or anything. Well, that's because on the back here, we have an Arduino Mega. Here's the power switch, ready? So yeah. So I don't wanna see none of y'all complain about the size of the, the Prusa Mark IV control board. Um, so yeah, so th this is what we're working with. Um, version 1.5.7. This, you could build this thing yourself. Everything on here is a surface mount component or, or through holes. Everything on this is through hole. There are no SMDs on this controller board. Everything on here is through hole. Like literally everything on here is through hole. And I'm missing a, oh shoot. Um, oh no, that's the Z driver. Yeah, the Z driver is, so what do I have, stepper, what are these? What are those? Okay, so that's Z, X, Y, oh, extruder. Oh, I could run two extruders on this though. I've got two extruders. Um, I could run five steppers on here. Um, but it's like, oh, the, the, the Z's at eight micro step though. You can tell from the jumpers. <laughs> I could tell from the jumpers. Um, so yeah, I am so looking forward to this build. You have no idea how much I'm looking forward to this build. I'm so happy I finally found one of these. Uh, must be based on ramps or so. Raymond, think the opposite. <laughs> I'm pretty sure ramps is based on this or at least kind of the same thing. Um, Where's the frame? Oh, you, you want to see the frame? Here's the, here's part of the frame. Here's the back, I think. It's one of the sides. I think this is one of the sides. At least it's not warped. Um, I've got stepper motors in here. 
I've got I've got all kinds of fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, the power supply. Toshiba AC adapter. Uh, 19 volts. 19 volts. <laughs> So I, mean, I think it steps it down to 12 volts. I don't know. Bearings are huge. Yeah, I don't want to dig through the box too much, but yeah. Oh, here. Here's your Zed rod with the uh, brass drive nut so that's um where's my thing no no this eight mil i'm pretty sure this is probably inch standard too where's my measuring thing i don't know that might be an eight mil rod no it's a 12 mil 12 mil rod um yeah So, back in my day. <laughs> it's an Ultimaker original. Not original plus, original. So I think mine's an older version of the kit. Um, but the Ultimaker original, which is this, uh, came out in 2012. Is it original or original plus? I think it's original. Yeah, it's not even original plus. So yeah, mine is the original version of the Ultimaker, although I think it's a later kit. So it's like an older revision of the kit. So like, the bed has no heater. Like, th this is it. This is what you get. This is what we're building. Yeah, buddy. Grid, grid cutter across the bed. Um, I don't think it does. Here's the bed. <laughs> um, it still has the sheet on it and there's nothing cut into it. There's like a little square etched into it, but that's it. Just um, a half inch sheet of like acrylic. So uh, we'll be blue taping that one. Good thing I got my uh, my E leveler from Chap. Thank you, Chap. I'm gonna need this. <laughs> Better than four millimeter thread. Uh, my uh, Monoprice Select Mini had a four millimeter threaded rod for the Z drive. This print, no offense, is looking like poo poo. I'm pretty sure the. Um, yeah, we're getting a lot of blobbing. But yeah, we're gonna do the pressure advanced tune after this. What is an acceptable bed level variation? Um, you want the little, the least amount possible. Um, but it depends on how big your bed is, what you're trying to print, and do you have the ability to compensate for it? So what that means is you have like, can you run a bed mesh? Um, in a perfect world, zero, obviously. But if you're talking like 0.2 millimeters across a 350 millimeter bed, that's nothing. What you gotta worry about is if you are trying to print something, okay, that needs to be vertical, okay? And your bed, has a big honking skew to it or dip or whatever. And you have bed mesh. So what that does is it'll it'll adjust your first couple layers, usually like the first like what 10 layers, so that it'll, you know, it'll follow it and then eventually it'll bleed it out. But what will happen is is if your bed has a slant to it, even though when this is sitting on your print bed like this, it's nice and vertical because it compensated those first layers. If you take that part out of your printer and you're like, okay, this needs to stand up vertical on its own, and it does that because the bottom isn't flat, 
okay? Now, if it's a 0.2 millimeter deviation across like 350 millimeters, eh, I might, you might not even notice that. But if you got like blah, 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 blah or it's really out, um, you might notice that. Now, here's the thing. Are you printing tall things that need to be perfectly, you know, 90 degrees? No, you're just printing, you know, benchies and shit. Well, then it might not matter. Derek, $10, cheers for the Ultimaker wood board. Would you need a CNC and mill them again? Um, well, I have them, but no, they're laser cut. You would want to laser cut them. So I'm going to swap this filament out. I, I'm trying to remember if this pink filament is an issue. It might be. Uh, well, I have the, whatever the stock display is, is what I'm running. So I'm running it fully stock. 1.6 millimeter on a 300 bed and I can't get any lower. Um, then what printer is that? Because something is not right. If you have 1.6, are you talking the printer? It, like if you look up the mesh and it's like this, or are you talking you got like a bow in the middle or a, a hump? Okay. Cause if it's like, if the bed is flat, but it's like this, you can fix that mechanically depending on the printer. You might have to like adjust that. But if you got like bows and dips and rallies and whatnot, and it, yeah, that ain't good. Um, Vitaly, 1999, cheers. Slanted, CR10. Okay, you gotta relevel your bed then. Or, or you gotta tram your bed out. So bust out that piece of paper and start tramming. Um, how, how are you determining it's out? The Z axis is not level. Okay. Um, does the CR10 have a single lead screw? Does the CR10 have a single lead screw? Like, are, is your gantry drooping away? Single screw, yeah. So what's probably happening, your gantry, as your, as your tool head moves down, it's doing this. So you might have to play with your V wheels and tighten them up so that everything kind of stays straight. But yeah, it shouldn't be doing that. It shouldn't be doing that. Because everything you print, even if you tram out the bed to the gantry, everything's gonna come out like a friggin' parallelogram. Um, mine has two motors for the Z-axis, catch one waffle. Well, if you have two motors, what you should do, make sure your frame's square, drive your Z-axis up to the top and bottom them out against the top, okay? That should um, tram you out to the top of your frame, and then you come down and you 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 tram your bed to that. Because what can happen is even if you got two separate lead screws, if depending on if you, you manually move it or you something you bump it or crashed, they can come out of step. And your and your your gantry that was parallel to the bed is now like this. So your gantry moves up and down on an angle like this. So what you do is you come up to you come to the top of the frame and this motor will hit and then that motor will hit and it'll stall out and then you're, you're square and then you come down and then you tram your bed to it. That's what Prusa does. They, they because they have two motors but they're the same stepper, they, they crash it to the top and it trams it out. Think it could be belted. You don't need to belt it. Um, belting just makes it so they can't come out of sync, but by driving them into the top, you can drive them back into sync. And how often, like, it, that's something you should really only have to do if you crash or you manually move them. As long as they always power up and power and move together, they shouldn't come out of sync too much. So, like, it was funny. My Mark III, um, I moved it back inside because it was out here for a bit and I grabbed it and I grabbed it by the gantry and I moved it manually. So I go back downstairs and I go to do a print with it and it does its bed probe and it goes, hey, this is effed. So what it does is it goes to the middle, it drives up to the top, it re-squares the gantry, then it comes back down and does a probe again. It's like, okay, now I'm good because I, I accidentally moved the gantry out of skew and it detected that. Linear rod still relevant? Yeah. For smaller printers, linear rods are fine. They're a bit more of a pain when it comes to designing stuff that holds it because you have to encapsulate the bearing um, and you can't support a mid span. You can't mount anything to them. Um, but linear rods are fine on 
smaller designs in my anything 250 and under linear rods are fine in my opinion i personally like rods or correction i personally like um rails but yeah is that a clipper function the mark three no that's that's my mark three runs prusa's firmware it, my mark three is fully stocked except for a raspberry pi zero two with a webcam and octoprint Uh, a curve bed. Yeah, that's another thing. You could have a twisted gantry. I have a video on my channel about twisted gantries. And that is something that plagues V-wheel bed flingers because as regardless of what anyone wants to tell you, extruded aluminum is not a precision thing. It's literally extruded aluminum. They take aluminum and they force it through a die and it comes out in a shape. It's like Play-Doh. Remember that Play-Doh thing when you're a kid where you put the Play-Doh in and you go squish and it comes out in a moon shape? Yeah. That's how they make extruded aluminum. Now, when they're done extruding it, they grab it from both ends and they pull it tight and that straightens it. But we're not talking hardened linear rod straight. We're not ha talking ground, ground rail straight. It's straight. So what can happen is if it's twisted, as your, as your tool head moves, it twists. So if you're manually leveling, you might not notice it, but the moment you put a probe on that's offset from your nozzle, well, when it probes, it's probing here and it thinks this is zero, but it's not because now the tool head's higher or the nozzle's lower. Because when it's when it's when it's square, zero is zero. But as it moves, it does this. So now zero is not zero, but it doesn't know that. Aren't Bamboo Lab CF rods? They use CF rods. I'm not a huge fan of CF rods. I think they're a waste and they uh, wear out and you can't easily replace them. Play-Doh for your printer parts. I mean, there is a V0 that exists built entirely out of TPU and it prints just fine, so. If you wanna use Play-Doh, you do you, fam, you do you. If you had to guess what percentage of 3D products are 3D printed in 10 years? Commercially, none. Low percent, very low percent. You can't mass produce with 3D printing. That's the downside with it. Three D printing doesn't scale, unfortunately. Ooh, I do. I do like this bed material. Okay, so let's get this filament out. I don't like it. No offense, uh, printed solid, but this PLA has kind of been buggy. Okay. What do I have for PLA that I can use out here in my garage? I'm gonna do red or green? What are you? Polylite PLA. Let's purge some of this filament. And then we will do um, that uh, pressure advanced tune. So here's the cube. Um, it, it's got issues. Other than the fact it's not focusing. Focus! Sony has great autofocus, don't you know? So it's, it's got some ex extrusion issues. I mean, for a first print off a built, a newly built machine, it's, it, it is the thing we asked it to make. I mean, when we compare it to the Tico, oh shit, the Tico's better. <laughs> the Tico's better, um, somewhat, the Tico, Butchered the overhang. This had a decent overhang at least. So hey, if, if you if you send me a printer and I review it, I'm gonna print my cube and I'm gonna compare it to a Tico. Um, and if the Tico, which is in white, comes out better, you got work to do. <laughs> also, I now finally have a banana for scale. So. I can use it to measure my disappointment for not being able to go to LTX. Okay, so we're gonna extrude 50 millimeters of filament, extrude. There we 
go. Okay. Um, so now we have that PA test. Other, so slice preview, it's gonna do that. Print, upload and print, there we go. So it's complete, completed, uploaded, it should do the thing. There we go. Uh, pick in the Discord. Perfectly straight for V-Wheels, yeah. Mucho bueno. But no, I have a video on my channel about um, twisted extrusions. You should, uh, if, you, if you think you have twisted or if you're having issues, that's something you should always check. Because twisted extrusions are a thing and a lot of people don't realize that. If you have to print ABS ASA reliably and cost is no issue, um, why I still use PLA. PLA has a lot of good colors. There are a lot of good colors. Um, especially if you're doing like multi-color multi prints, um, PLA is just a bit simpler. It's a, lot, it's a lot more forgiving. Like if you're just printing desktop trinkets that just sit on a shelf, you might as well print PLA because the prints will come out looking better for like overhangs and whatnot, crisper corners. But a good, you know, a good enclosed machine can print ABS almost as good. I use a lot of eight, I use whatever's loaded in my machine. Depends what I'm printing, but there are still places for PLA. PLA is still stiffer than ABS. So if you need to print something that's stiff and very rigid, PLA has the advantage. It just, you know, hopefully doesn't get hot. So. Why does my shirt say my heart is money? That's not what my shirt says. At least I'm pretty sure. Oh, that's not what it says. I know, didn't ask. Is it rain? Fizek printer is any good? I don't know. Um, I've built one. My 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 Trident is. Um, a Fizek kit. I've had to replace all the fans on it. They all died. And right now I have to rip apart the extruder because the, um, the, um, the bond, whoop. That stalled out. So I tried to do a rapid and wasn't too happy with that. Wonder what happened there. Bed size is still set to 120. I thought I changed it. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. Safe. There we go. So this, this might, we might crash again. We'll see in a second. Now it's saved. Where are we at right now? 748? Okay. Move out of range. Yep. Yep. Okay. One second here. Um, yeah. So let's, uh, let's, I'm going to have to reprint that. One second here.
Yeah, it, it didn't like that. Okay. So that. Slice plate. There we go. Okay, so. There we go. That looks a little bit more in line. So let me clean the bed off. Do I have a scraper out here? I don't know if I do. Um, I do. Uh, it's a, it's, it looks like a carbon fiber sticker. Like it's not a sheet of carbon fiber. It is a spring steel bed, but it's got a sticker on it, which looks like carbon fiber. Did you fail too? Uh, don't tell me that part failed too. Ah. Uh. Yeah, you failed too. Dang it. Well, hopefully you finish. Uh, the thing with resin, once it fails, you might as well let it finish. Because it's like, it's just sitting on the bed. That sucks. Just waiting for everything to heat back up and we'll uh, do this pressure advanced thing again. didn't home all the way that's not homing all the way um you stop that is not homing all the way uh let me play around with these values the sensitivity for the xy homing has been a little not great Print, reconnect it. Okay, upload and print, there we go. There we go. Good bed size. No, it's sensorless. It's the moment I put this Bowden tube in it and it's like, it, it started getting a little like false positive. Wow, it just dropped. Yeah, it's, it's a belted bed with no uh, gearing. It's gonna drop like a rock. Yeah, it's a belted bed with no gearing. It's gonna, the moment it loses power, it's gonna drop. So. 
There we go. So what it's doing, it's printing a bunch of lines at different PA values, and then it writes the number beside the line. So basically you just look at all the lines and whatever one is the most consistent, that's your PA value. You have 800 hours on a rook? What are you printing so many of that are so little? What about an M4 mod? Well, I have something like that on one of my V0s on the V02 that we built. It works. But it, it, the bed dropping on this isn't really like an issue that you need to overcome. Like, let's be honest, bed resolution, y'all are printing at 0.2 layer height anyways. If your bed has a million degree accuracy, who gives a crap? You're, paying, you're printing at 0.2 layer height. You're, you're fine. And then it writes the numbers there so you know which one to look at. Oh, great. Okay, so that's stop. Yeah, you failed. How did you fail so badly? Seriously, I got one part out of you. I got one flipping part out of you. Two, maybe two. Got two flipping parts out of this print. I'm putting five parts on, I got two. We're gonna have to do some resin shenanigans after this. Okay, so, um. I gotta drop the bed. Um, okay, so what we're gonna do is, um, ready? Motor's off. There we go. <laughs> I would say point Point three six looks the cleanest. Pressure advance point three six. I don't know if there's uh, and then there's like a smooth time thing, right? Uh advance, smooth time, yeah, add a smooth time to it. I don't know what the 0.04 means. I always use 0.04. There we go. Cool. Save, restart. 0.4. Ah, 0.4 might be a little too much. 0.36 seems to be... I tend to go a little... Ah, actually, 0.4 might... See, 0.4, the text didn't come out good. 0.36 was the last one where the text actually came out good. So... So I'm gonna put you here. You're gonna come over here, cause I'm gonna need some room here to do some resin bullshit. You want what? You want a Gatorade? Do you want a cold Gatorade? Yeah. Okay, here, Dad will get you a cold Gatorade. And I'm totally not saying that. Actually, I don't know if we have any cold Gatorade. Uh, we don't have any cold Gatorade, but here, you can have this one. There you go. Well, bring it inside, Mama will put some ice cubes in it. There you go. Okay, have fun. Oh, nice.
Okay, um, so that's saved. So somebody gave me a, a rook to print. So I'm gonna print that. Uh, download. Download the rook. Download. Why is that not in the center? Center. Slice plate. Um, actually, where is retractions on this? Where would retractions be? Retractions. Cooling and fans. Where is retractions? in here okay there we go retraction length it, it that's override so would it be in here where's retractions at machine motion ability printer settings retraction oh here we go extruder okay uh, retraction 8.8. .8. Oh no, we need more than 0.8 mil. Um, we'll do like three mil because it's a Bowden. I don't know how how long of retraction are you guys running on your rooks? How, how much retraction are you guys running on your rooks? It's not too often I play with the the, the remote drive setups. Two mil, two mil, 40 mil. Okay, two mil at 40 millimeters a second. Okay, save. Save, okay, cool. So the slice plate, generic PLA, cool. Print, upload and print. Okay, so we're gonna do that, let that do that. I'm gonna get my slap mat out and we're gonna play with the cancer. Everyone likes cancer. Might have to do redo PA. You don't have to redo PA. PA isn't dependent on retraction. Input shaping affects PA. And we haven't, we haven't done input shaping on this. So this kind of sucks because a whole bunch of these parts didn't come out. Oh. Wow, okay. That is some, oh yeah, that part failed too. Dang it, what about you? Okay, this is transparent. Is that part, okay. I might have one good part out of this, great. The, the support, the parts broke off the support. Great. That means they're floating in the bed. So. Was it a bed adhesion? No, the bed adhesion's good. Bed adhesion's good. Bed adhesion's a little too good. Yeah, I've got one good part off this. So that's garbage, that's garbage. Oh, no, I got these two. These two are good. Hopefully that part and this part. Okay, so that's that. So here's a fun fact. Always keep some of this stuff around because this makes getting your, um, if, you're, if you get a fail and you got to clean off your bed, you stick some of this gunk, like the that, in your bed. Here, let me bend the camera over so you can see. In the bin. So, what happened is, we have some part fails. Okay, oh, there we go. Tilt over, there we go, cool. Hey, you can see the resin machine. 
Oh, I didn't hit print. Did I not? Oh, is it printing? Yeah, it's printing. There we go. So I've got stuff stuck in the bed. Like this, did that finish? Probably not. But there's a bunch of, I don't know, floating in here. So I keep these parts of support. I, 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 um, I throw them through the, the hardener or the UV so that I can touch them with my hands. But you, you, you slide that in, you let it touch the bed, system, or home, tool, tank clean, boom. And then keep a few boxes around. <laughs> so what it's doing is it's exposing the whole bottom layer of the bed. So it's basically exposing a full image. You let that do its thing. And then, you peel up your sheet. And it has all the parts that like stuck to the bed, stuck to it. In the bin. Easy peasy. this stuff I gotta put more in. So fortunately that used up a whole bunch of resin for no reason. Oh hello pupper. Hey over here. Over here. Boy you go boy. Hey come here. Where's your good boy? Going inside with mommy? Going inside with mommy. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Oh. I'll be in soon. Yeah, I know. So let's see how many of these stupid parts I saved. That, that annoys me. I gotta, so I'm gonna have to play with some of these settings here, obviously. So let me grab this bottle here, because it should have normal exposure three to 15. Okay, so I gotta do longer, longer layer exposures. That's what got me. Doggo doesn't appear. Well, he can't just wander out here. That's the thing. Like inside, he can easily wander into the basement, but he's got to like go to the door and I can't hear him at the door. Like I can, uh... okay. So these were all the parts I tried to print. So I got, these two came out okay. And maybe this one. But I will check. So let's see. Doggo. Tank Kitty. Yeah, Doggo was like five minutes ago. Can you use your Ender 3 display? I think he, as long as the Ender display is compatible with Clipper, you should be able to use it. I don't see why you wouldn't be able to. But as long as it's compatible with Clipper, you, you should be okay. Okay, so. Um, is this good? I don't think this is good. I think that failed. Oh wait, maybe this one's good. No, nope, that one failed too. Really? 
Well, give me a paper towel here. So I don't get my mouse all sticky. Okay. So this one is good. Okay. I've got one good piece along with these two guys. So this is good. That's good. And that's good. Okay, so those are good. This. is not this is not and that is not okay so it's those so i got three good pieces out of six seven shoot oh well is what it is two of these are too small to wash so you can go in the bat you go there and you can all go in the bin. Waste of filament, waste of resin. Waste of resin. In the bin. What to waste, what to waste. off with ISO. Resin ain't cheap. Nope. Resin ain't cheap and it's a pain to work with. So it's kind of like you don't want to waste it because you've seen this whole mess I had to go through just to start one new print. So it's like, you really don't want to. Now, luckily I don't really, I'm printing these in black because these parts will be black. So I kind of want them to be, to be black just for appearances and whatnot. Um, but it's not a huge deal if they're not. So I can like, I can reprint them in, in gray. I just, I'd rather not. It kind of is what it is. Okay. So let's try this again with more support. And with a little bit longer print time. Okay, what failed? Um, they didn't stick to the supports. Um, I haven't used this resin. I, I used my old settings and I think my settings were a little too aggressive for this resin. So it, um, they didn't fuse right. So basically everything kind of just popped off the bed, unfortunately, um, which is what it is, but it sucks because wasted a whole bunch of material. Slice. Okay, so lift distance three, exposure time. I'm gonna do a four second exposure. I'm gonna do a nice slow retract, 175. The first layers were good. 
Um, I'm gonna drop the speed just a little bit because this is gonna finish tonight and I really don't care when it finishes tonight because I'll be in bed. What time is it? 8.04. Oh, we're gonna do the giveaway in a second. So once I get this print, this resin print going, I'm gonna crack another brewski and then we'll do the giveaway. Save. I did save it. There we go. Writing file. Yeah, this is looking a lot better than the, uh, the last print the uh i can focus this camera a bit one second here uh, custom video settings camera control focus there we go is that focus is that better better or worse better or worse There we go. Okay, so hopefully you come out looking good this time and not like poo poo. I really don't want to do you again. Washing parts in isopropyl alcohol. So much fun. So much fun. Final thoughts on the Rook. Fun build. Uh, again, this printer, if you're, if you've never built a printer before and you're looking for just, you know, a fun little build series to do, um, you, you don't want to take on something as advanced as building like a Voron or any other of the large, you know, complex Quarks Y kits. You're just looking for something, you know, that's a fun little build that you could do in a weekend if you just want to, you know, fiddle around with it. Um, you can't really go wrong, I don't think. Um, it, it's it's a, a neat little build. It, it does what it, it aims to do. And yeah, it, it, it do be, oh. it do be a printer. Um, when I'm doing that little basket, um, I hang it on the fan. Cause when you take stuff out of a resin before you, oh, did I, did I fall? No. Um, with resin parts, you want them bone dry when you put them in the UV. So if you take a wet resin print and put it in, uh, maybe I could show it on this. Yeah, I could show it here on the Miracle. Miracle? I don't know, the, the bunny chick with the, the, the hoo-hahs. Um, okay, see how, let me go behind the camera. Okay, focus on the bunny chick with the hoo-hahs. Focus. Oh, wait, I can just push the button. Focus, there we go, okay. See how some of their shiny spots on it? Okay. Yeah, you can see like right there. That's because it was wet there um, when it went into the iso bath or when it came out of the iso bath and it went into the UV curing. So you can see like there's a shiny spot there, I think. So I'm looking at the camera view. Um, so yeah, you, you want the whole print really dry. So that's why you wanna use like a high percentage ISO with no water in it because, hi, let me turn off autofocus <laughs> or turn off spot focus. There we go. Um, because ISO will pretty much completely evaporate. 
Um, so you want it dry when you put it in the UV because otherwise you'll get that sheen on it. So I think with that kit or with that print, I, um, I think I rinsed it off with water first and I didn't get it all or something. I didn't have enough, I didn't have enough resin or ISO to clean it fully. So I put it in ISO or I, I washed it with water first. So what printer did I even do that on? Did I do it on that one? I think I did it on that one before I bought more red. Yeah, I bought, I did that before. Cause I did a few prints before I bought more ISO. You need to do UV cure with the part underwater. Actually, that might be something to try. Because then the whole thing would be shiny, wouldn't it? But you would get like a, um, like the, the finish wouldn't be that good, I don't think. That I gotta clean some more. I gotta clean some more. This one's good. And yes, I know it's not fully cured. But I can't really easily wash these little pieces. I don't I have a brush out here. I mean, I have a brush, but I don't think I have a brush brush. Um, Uh, we're gonna do the giveaway in a second here, so make sure you enter. If you haven't entered yet for your chance to win some Polymaker filament, um, do that now because we're gonna be doing the giveaway in a second here. I don't know where it brushes. Oh, well. I'll just douse it with ISO and wipe it off with paper towel. There we go. There we go. Always wear gloves. Yeah, do as I say, not as I do. It's just these parts are so small and I, those gloves have holes in them anyways. There we go. There we go. Oh, okay, that's much better. Like, to be fair, most of the resin is washed off these. They just need to cure. Don't worry, I'm cleaning off the resin with the isopropyl directly on my skin. We're good. I know. For, for everyone giving the hot tips about resin, I'm fully aware. I've done videos on it. Do as I say, not as I do. Do I give away filament every stream? I do. Every stream we do give away a spool of filament from Polymaker. So let's do that giveaway right now because we're going to be ending this stream in like 10 minutes. Should have done the giveaway right at 8. Um, so if you didn't enter, you'll have another chance on Tuesday uh, for Proustay because uh, we'll be carrying on with part 3 of the Prusa build. Um, we should be wrapping up the Y axis and then moving on to configuration. Uh, we're pretty close to the end of the Prusa build. So that will be this Tuesday. So you'll have another chance then. Oop. There we go. Prusa build. Yeah, we're building a Prusa. Okay. So this took five parts. Um, give me a number between one and five. I require a number between one and five. There we go. One and five. New model workshop, four. I can work with that. One, two, three, four. Round and round she goes. Where she stops? I don't know. Computers will know. Computers know everything. Congratulations to bum, 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 
Jim Macrobot, you better not be a robot. Jim Macrobot, you better not be a robot. If you're a robot, we're gonna have a bad time. Uh, one of one, okay, cool. So congratulations, Jim. You will get an email from me after the stream ends with information on how to collect your filament from Polymaker. So yay, golf claps and chat for Jim, everyone. How is that coming along? I think we're okay. It's hard to tell. That's the thing with resin. I don't like, like, I know you can pause a resin print and it'll come up out and you can see how it's coming, but then it always leaves a line. So I try to avoid doing that. So I let it print. Because here's the thing, you'd, you'd rather a resin print fail early so it doesn't waste resin, right? If it fails early, you don't waste resin. But you don't know if it fails early. So it still takes a while. There's a lot of little gates on this thing, isn't it? How? What is this print anyways that I'm printing? I know it's a torture test. Oh, the little doors are, are torture. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, that's gonna be fun. That's gonna be a fun one. Oh, I had that on the wrong monitor. No one has a K1 Max? No, Creality had to fix them all before they shipped them out. No, I, only a few reviewers got them. And none of the reviewers that I know that are more of the technical actually dive into stuff have really gotten them. It's it's all the people that show off printers that have them. Because <laughs> they were all gung-ho on sending me one until I said I was gonna rip it apart and, t and take a look into it and actually like check it out and then nothing. Although I did speak to them after that and they still said they were gonna send me one and I still don't have one. So. We shall see. Big red flag. Oh, I know. Do, 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 do. So yeah, we'll end the stream in uh, like five minutes here. We'll just let this go for a bit. Unfortunately, this won't end on stream, obviously. So I'll post pictures of this once it uh, finishes on the Twitters and the Discord. So make sure you're following the Discord link in the description. Um, follow me on Twitter at 3DP Nero. Um, you know, Twitter is a complete garbage site, but it's the best garbage site there is for what it is. Um, yeah. I will say this print is coming in now that we actually have proper pressure advance values. Um, this is printing a heck of a lot better than that first print that we did, so. Put vanilla clipper on a key one. Yeah, you have to do a whole bunch of stuff to like un, cause it, it comes from the factory like locked down. So you have to like root it and everything, which is stupid that you even have to do that. Creality, that's, you know, not how clipper works. You, you guys are wasting your time and money instead of coming out with better machines. You're wasting time and money faffing about with firmware you don't need to faff about with, but yeah. What shelving did you use for the printers when you were downstairs? Downstairs, they weren't on shelves. They were just on workbenches. Um, one was a Husky and one was just like some random bench I've had for like 10 years. DRM, well, they also changed a bunch of stuff that in my opinion was completely pointless. Like there's nothing in their firmware, their version of Clipper that makes it any better than normal clipper. 
Like as far as, uh, now granted, I don't have the machine, so I can't say for sure. But from what I've seen, there's really nothing that they've changed that is a, an improvement. It's just an alternative and, and just more work. They'll release it in September. Here's the thing. The moment you release it public, the moment that printer shipped, you were supposed to. If you fork a open source project that's under the license that Clipper has, you must disclose source upon request. And since somebody will be that guy who will ask right away, you pretty much have to disclose it the moment it's available, okay? So the moment that somebody can have that file, that printer in their hand and they go, cool, hi, I would like the source for this. You have to disclose it. And they're not doing that. So they're going, oh, we'll release it in September. Why can't they do it now? Like they're, they're straight up violating the license. Um, I think it's a CF sticker. It's got like a texture to it. Is this Rook in ABS? The plastic parts on this Rook are in ABS, yes. No one's gonna enforce it. Well, here's the thing. How do you, like, I don't have the money to enforce it. I know, uh, what's his, um, ah, shoot, what's his name? The Clipper guy. He doesn't have the cash to go and enforce it. That's the problem with a lot of these open source projects. There's not enough money involved. Like, it's open source free projects. It's not like you have tens of thousands of dollars for legal and then, you know, China gonna China, you have no power here. You can't do anything when it's China, so. Did I do the draw? Yes, we did the draw already, Rose. More legal. They do, they have legal teeth. It's just nobody has, not many people have the funds to go after it. Like, I was kind of like, who was it? Uh, Kira. Kira is backed by Ultimaker, which is Stratus. Well, I don't know. They're not part of Stratus anymore, are they? I can't remember. They're, they're the, one of the big guys, okay? They have the money and the lawyers. I would love to see them actually start flexing their legal muscle when it comes to, you know, these companies that are that are violating the license on Cura just to put the fear of God and, and wallets and lawyers into everyone else that's stealing, you know, violating open source license. Because here's the thing, if you can do it to like, you know, Cura, which is Ultimaker, which is Stratasys or was at the time, and nothing happens, well, do you think there's gonna be repercussions when you violate the GPL on some open source project that's maintained by one guy? So, ban companies that violate licenses. Yeah, but nobody's gonna do that. Nobody's gonna do that. Five minutes in Cura, my machine shuts down. What do you mean, your, mach your printer? That, what? Okay, let's take a looky loo here. So that 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 works. So this part goes over there, and then these two are usable, so we'll be good. Because I think these are just cosmetics. Yeah, these are just cosmetic ones. Yeah. Don't worry, the resin's cured now. So I've got one of these, one of these parts came out okay. Great. Got one. One. Ah, ah, ah. Even if they release the source code, the hardware is T, but it won't matter. Well, that's the thing. Well, there's already, people have already figured out how to get around their, uh, their whatchamacallit. Their, uh, people have already rooted the printer, so. Although they might do what they did with the, uh, the Sonic pad where they put an update out where it prevented people from doing the, they, they literally modified the firmware on the Sonic pad so you couldn't root it anymore. Like that's, that's, that's kind of company Creality is. And considering the fact that they didn't even know how to deal with thermal runaway on Clipper to begin with when they shipped me their Sonic pad. Um, yeah, I don't trust it. There's a reason I don't use the Sonic pad. And there will be a reason that if I do get a K1, it's gonna be in my garage on concrete and it won't be running on its own. Because remember how I say, 
You know, when it comes to worrying about, you know, oh, you should have fire prevention in your printers. And then I say, hey, if I was that worried about my printer catching fire, I wouldn't be running it to begin with. Yeah, that machine will be running on a concrete block in my garage <laughs> and not unattended. Unless I have normal off the shelf clipper running on it because I don't know what they did. And the last time I played with something that they didn't know what they were doing with, it tried to burn my house down. So yeah. Did I miss a super chat? Oh, I did. Uh, Derek, $5, cheers. I read the thing, I just didn't see the super chat. Bit of a brain fart there. Uh, do you plan on building the 100? Not really, unless a kit for it shows up. I mean, it's a variant of this machine that goes faster. I'm not gonna really revisit it unless like a kit for it shows up. I'm not gonna go out of my way to self-source one. I don't really, again, when it, when it comes to these kind of printers, I build these printers for the show. Um, so, like if I'm building a printer, I need to be able to justify the existence of that printer in my household for this show. Um, so that, a, a 100 build would just be revisiting this, basically. And that's pretty much it. And you know, this is coming from the guy who's built like four or five V zeros on the stream over the years. So is a mod or a rook. It's kind of like taking, I, I don't think it's a mod, but it's basically taking the idea of a mostly printed small form factor core XY and just going absolutely bonkers with it, aiming to do hundred K Excel or something, which, you know, at 120 millimeter print volume is kind of like neat, I guess. I just, honestly, I really don't like the name too. I think that name is just very like, what? I had to buy a whole bunch of brass pins today in Springs. That was fun. I might be able to put together this uh, Blade Runner blaster this week, hopefully, because it's more small. I've got all the small printers. I, I love small printers. They're great, but like they're still limiting as heck because they are small printers. Okay, I think we're gonna end the stream there. I've got, oh shoot, I got three minutes. Okay, we're gonna call it there. Um, I will post pictures of this print once it's done on Discord and Twitter and whatnot. Um, so follow there. Um, yeah, shout out to, I want to give again, another shout out to Fabrico. They are the ones that provided this kit for this build series. Um, if you consider that sponsored, then this is sponsored by them, but no money's exchanged hands, words and opinions are my own, blah, 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 YouTube disclosure. Um, this was a fun build. There were a few little quirks to it. Um, it's very much an in-dev thing, in my opinion. Like we had, I had to redo a few of these parts because like, you know, the, the nozzle didn't, reach past the the fan shroud and the the, the fans didn't spin because they were hitting like this is you know it, it it's not a fully mature design but it's it's at the point where if you wanted to build one of these and you kind of you kind of know how a 3d printer worked it shouldn't be too hard and you know there's a whole community around it there's discords you can go on whatnot so if, if you're looking for a printer to build and you've never really built um a printer before Something like this might be up your alley. It's a simple build. It's not too complex. Um, and you should have a good time building it. Um, and if you want a kit for it, uh, link in the video description. Fabrico does have a kit. 
and I think a few other vendors have kits. And then also, um, you can also self-source, which if you have a bunch of spare parts kicking around at home already, this would be a perfect excuse to reuse some of them. Um, so yeah, I wanna give uh, also another shout out to Polymaker for the spool of filament that we gave away this stream and every stream. Uh, links for them and more in the description. Some of them are affiliate links. Don't cost you anything extra. Go a long way in supporting the channel. And for those that uh, donated to the stream, gifted memberships or became members of the channel yourself, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. You make it all possible. So we will reconvene on Tuesday uh, for the next part in the person build and hopefully we'll get it moving. So I will see you then. It's Sunday night. Uh, Back to work. Bye.